As a Christian female in the fitness industry, I've seen so many women frustrated as they search for transformation through diets and exercise alone. And what I've realized is that God's Word, the most important part of this life for a Christian, seems to be the portion that's always missing from what we're being taught about being fit and healthy. Courageous Fit Female is a podcast for women who love Jesus and want to get fit and healthy His way. Want to seek His truth versus what the world says? Then let's get into today's show. Hey everyone, welcome back to Courageous Fit Female. This is Jacqueline Castro and for the next three episodes, we are going to be diving into a series I'm calling Heart Check Series and there is a Bible theme verse for this entire series and that is from the book of Luke chapter 12 verse 34 and everyone knows this verse. It's for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And if that's the first time you've heard that verse, I pray that the Holy Spirit would do a wonderful thing in your heart where whether it's conviction or where, whether it's helping you to switch your mind and rewire it to think about the things that we're putting our treasures in, whether it's our body or food or how our bodies are shaped, right? And so this series is going to remind us to keep doing a heart check. I know that all of us need that, including me. I'm totally raising my hand on that. So let's get into the first episode. And in this episode, I'm going to help you to rewrite your goals as God-centered goals instead of self-centered goals, right? And we all know what those are about. I don't need to feel like I need to explain myself about what that is. And for those of you who are like, I don't have any goals. I'm not really all about goals. Well, okay, I want you to think about your mission, your aim, your ambition, you know, your wishes and your desires of why you're trying to get fit, why you're trying to get healthy, why you are trying to reshape your body and go on that diet and, and, the, and all the rest. So first and foremost, our goals, right, whatever they are for you, are they built on lies? And I can almost guarantee you that they are built on lies. And what we need to do about that is we need to identify and replace worldly lies, right? Because that's where they are. They're worldly lies. They're lies from Satan with God's truth. We all know that in the Garden of Eden, that's where deception started. That's, you know, Satan was painting a picture to Eve of what God gave her that that wasn't enough. And we also know that Satan is the father of lies, right? As what it says in John eight forty four. So whatever your goals are, let's go ahead and rewrite what they are. And the first thing that we need to do to rewrite those goals is number one, assess who influenced your goals. So who influenced your goals? We, we can be influenced by anyone from social media that, you know, you are led to try to make yourself look like that person, or maybe someone said something to you and now you're trying to make yourself look a certain way and you're doing all these things to try to move in that direction. So assess who influenced your goals. Now, this may be a very simple thing for you. Maybe you know already who it is. Maybe some of you don't know who that person is or maybe the, a collection of people that really influence and impacted as well. Not just influence, but they impacted the way that you see things when it comes to health and fitness and taking care of your body, right? And some of them are good. Not all of them are bad. Let's just put that out there. But that is the first thing is to take note, write it down, get a notepad, write your notes and write down who or who are the people who influenced your decision to write down your goal to figure out that this is the goal that I want. And that shouldn't be a hard step. So that's number one. Number two, the second thing that you are going to do is you're going to think about what does that tell you about what's pretty important to that person? Okay, so this is going to require some intentionality and really be purposeful and deliberate and intentional with your thoughts and your time. And think, what does that tell you again about the person and what, why, what, why do you think that was important to them? Maybe you're chasing abs or you're chasing, you know, a way to really reshape your body and you are super influenced by them and you know it to be true. 
So this really requires a big heart check, doesn't it? I know for me it does because when I think about the specific people that I used to follow and I think about why they were teaching me the things they did, I look back at their life as far as like the things that I can see with my eye, right? And, and their actions and the things that they talk about. And again, not all of them are bad. Most of them are great things. They really want to help other people with their health and their fitness. But when I look at that person that I'm learning from and that's teaching me, their value truly seemed to be that it was all about their body and that the goal, the ultimate goal was to do X, Y, and Z so that you can look a certain way. And did I try to do it to try to look like that sole person? Yeah, you bet I did. Like I, I was doing whatever I could to try to look like that person that was teaching me. And that's the downright honest truth. So that's why we need to really think about that person, whoever you wrote down, whatever they impacted you and influenced you in with health and all the rest, what does that tell you about what's pretty important to that person? Okay. Maybe it's abs popping out. Maybe it's, maybe it's, you know, I don't know. Maybe it really was about being energetic to serve. And that was like their intention of teaching you, right? Or maybe it was getting into a smaller jean size or being able to wear cute clothes or it's just about getting acknowledgement from other people that we look good. Maybe it's affirmation or getting back to your pre-baby weight or your high school weight. So those are just some things for you to think about. Now, the third thing is to help you to rewrite your goals. Or again, for those of you who have not written a goal down, this is to help you to guide you in writing a specific goal down. So the third thing is, what do you hope to gain out of it? Like when you're looking at your goals, right? For those of you who had a goal written down, and in this moment that I'm recording, it's January 2022. So most of you had a goal. If Even if you didn't write it down, you have this goal in your mind. So now I want you to put in the work. What do you hope to gain out of it? So if your goal was to shed 30 pounds, like, okay, so let's say you get to that point of actually shedding 30 pounds, right? What do you hope to gain out of it? What are those things? So I want you to write those things down. There's going to be a short list. Maybe it's a long list for some of us. Whatever it is, write that down. Put your pen to the paper. Set a timer if you need to. Carve out some time to do this. And guys, let me just say that this really does take time. And that's why change doesn't happen for a lot of us because we don't take the time to stop, to pause, to stop other things that are not so important and sit down and write down, think about, assess, evaluate, right? And reevaluate over and over again. This, this shouldn't just be happening one time. We should do this at least a couple times a year, quarterly, if you want to make it more organized, which is a great idea. So a lot of the times we don't get to see changes because we don't put time in to make change effect, to make change happen. So again, number three, write it down. What do you hope to gain out of it, out of your goal? And number four is who? Okay, now we're going back to the question of who, but it's a different kind of who is who will you impact? And that is such an essential question to answer because whatever your goal is, we should be impacting a specific people, whether it's your family or your friends, your circle, your workplace, right? It actually trickles down. Like if you say, I want to impact my family, well, guess what? It's inevitable. It's going to trickle into your workplace. It's going to trickle into your ministries at church. It's, it's going to trickle into influencing your friends and on and on and on. And that's a good thing, right? That's a great thing. And that's why it's super important to be very mindful and cautious about the things that we introduce to our friends and our people, the people around us, because people will become influenced. We are super easily influenced people. And I just want to say that if your goal looks like mine back in my, in my past, where it was vanity focused, it was self-focused, and it was for others' approval, right? That is not a God-centered goal. That is far from a God-centered goal because, and this is not to condemn you, this is to do a heart check, right? To help you to do a heart check. Guys, I need this all the time, constantly. 
Okay. And so that's why you're here listening to this because you are looking for guidance. You are looking for a solution. And when it comes to figuring out what you want, it's really important to understand why we want it. And that's what the series is about is doing a heart check. We always need to go back to doing a heart check. And that is what you can choose to do as well is to ultimately, right? This is all about repenting, returning to Jesus with our heart, with our soul, with our mind, with our strength, and putting away the noise and all the other people's ideas and beliefs of what their goal or what a goal should look like or should include. So what we're really doing is, in essence, we are identifying the lie from the truth and we are learning how to replace it. We are finding a way and we are going to take action on replacing it. So the way to do that as you are going through these four questions is, number one, keep in mind that we are identifying the lie from the truth according to God, His will, and are you essentially, are you conforming to the image of Christ? And if how, how do you answer that? It's either yes or no. So it's really important that we identify those lies, write them down in one column on the left side of your paper, and then on the right half of your paper, write down the truth. And I want you to read it out loud. Okay, sometimes when we say it out loud and we read it out loud, it just sometimes sounds really foolish. And it really allows the Holy Spirit to do a work deep down in our hearts. And I also... I'm reminding you, sisters, to pray through this, to pray about it, to bring God to your goals and ask him to help you to have clarity on what it is and why it is you are taking this route to try to get better. Like, why? what is it that you are writing this goal down? Why you wrote this goal down to begin with, okay? And that's all about identifying the lie from the truth and then replacing it. When it comes to replacing it, I want you to replace those lies with this in mind. And that is that... In what ways will it impact the kingdom? Will you be able to use your hands and your feet to serve? Will you have more focus and clarity so you can pray? So you can finally take the time to carve out some time? Because we all say that prayer is important, right? So do we have enough clarity to pray? Or are we just praying haphazardly, right? And and it's not that God wouldn't accept your prayer, but he doesn't want us to rush through prayer. It's not just about checking it off the box. So replace those lies with that in mind, with in what way or ways will it impact the kingdom, right? Again, I'm talking about when you identify the lie from the truth, I want you to replace it with that in mind. So recapping this question of are your weight loss goals built on lies and we are identifying and replacing worldly lies with God's truth. Recapping, number one, assess who influenced your goals write these down. Number two, what does that tell you about what is pretty important to that person or those collective group of people? Number three, what do you hope to gain out of it? So once you have your goal, what do you hope that you're going to gain out of that? And number four, who will you impact? And again, keep in mind that it's either good or bad. You can impact someone for the good or for the not good for the bad. Guys, I hope this blessed you. This is really to rewrite your goals. Again, if you do not have goals, this is a time for you to stop, pause, take a break, carve out some time, like put it on your schedule to come back to this episode and write everything down. I will never stop saying that what I have learned is that I didn't take the time to press the pause button and figure out why I'm having these problems. It's because I keep avoiding it, right? I keep turning away from it and turning on the noise, which is something that we're going to talk about in the third part of this series. And these are the things that we do together one-on-one as we coach together in my coaching program. So if you have any questions about that, or if you know you are ready, my email is down below. Shoot me an email and let me know that you're ready. Or if you have any questions whatsoever, we go through assessments just like this. This is the hard piece that many people do not want to do. It's not just about joining a fitness program. There are a lot of things that come in between a lot of asterisks that people don't talk about when it comes to, hey, sign up for my fitness program, find sign up for this thing or that thing. And there's a lot of heart work, a lot of mind work that is included 
And the heart and the mind work are pieces that people totally avoid or they ignore or they just don't think it's that important. And that's where I come in. I help you one-on-one to get to the root of why you do what you do, why you keep doing the same things over and over again, and why are you believing these things? And I help you to replace those with God-centered goals. Lord, I pray for every single woman that is listening to this episode right now, whether they're driving or they're in the shower maybe, or they're cleaning their house, whatever they're doing, Lord, I pray that you would help them to remember to pause and to be reminded about where they're putting their treasures, Lord, because you tell us in scripture that for where our treasure is, there our heart will be also. And it is so easy to get caught up in this world, Lord, and to find our treasures in our bodies, in other people, in just all the things that are distracting. And that is what Satan came here for, Lord, to distract us away from you, a holy God who loves us, who came to die for our sins and who redeemed his son, Lord, so that we can have everlasting life. Remind us, Lord, to press into your Holy Spirit when we feel weak, when we feel like we can't do it because we can't do it, Lord. And I pray for everyone listening that they know who to turn to, that they know who to come to when they are feeling sorrow or when when they're feeling joy. We can come to you just as we are, Lord. But I just pray that we find our treasure in your son, Jesus, and we find our joy in him and that you help these women with their goals not be built on lies, but be built on your truth. Help them to lean into your son. Help them to find joy in your son, Jesus. I lift this prayer up to you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, ladies, come back for part two of this heart check series where I'm going to talk to you about how I carve out exercise even when things are crazy busy okay i'm going to give you three ways to make that happen and you have to come back for that if you have any questions my email is down below if you're ready for coaching let's do it jacqueline at courageousfitfemale.com until then i will see you on the next episode for his honor and for his glory stay courageous and fit